When I was 14, my uncle announced to me that we would be moving to Wyoming. I'm not going to name the town for obvious privacy reasons. I was ready to move. Not because I was being bullied or anything like that. But I just wasn't a fan of the crowded population. And also, I wasn't a fan of the town. My mom was a single mom who gave birth to me from an anonymous donor. That part wasn't what made me hate the town. My mom was mugged and killed when I was seven, and her brother, my uncle, took me in. I didn't witness it myself, as I was staying with my uncle when it happened. He broke the news the next day. But I don't need your pity. I've long moved on from this and my uncle has become like my parent. He's not the stereotypical uncle character either. My uncle Matt was almost seven feet tall, muscular, had dyed purple hair and a faux hawk, green eyes, stubble, and a pretty big tan. And he was really intimidating. However, his personality was and still is overall pleasant. He's very nice to me and is like a patient father to both his friends and family. He's also a retired military soldier from the Marine Corps, so he's quite tough. And although he's in his late 40s, he still looks like he's in his late 20s to early 30s. And despite his age, he keeps up with the modern day almost perfectly. So, he's not like an old man when trying to work a computer. He actually understands internet culture. Sorry, I'm going a little bit off topic. So, we arrived at our new house, and there was a welcome committee to greet us. Although strangely, they didn't want me in the same room as them and my uncle. When they left, my uncle had a dead, serious look on his face. He looked down at my 5'9 figure and warned me. Nathan, this might sound really weird, but stay inside after sundown. I was confused, but replied. Okay, Uncle Matt, I won't. He gave a smile and said, Good. Now let's finish setting up this place. Two years passed and things were going really well. I had made a lot of friends. And my uncle even got a new girlfriend named Amy around six months after moving in. Today, they are happily married. And I'm glad that I now have something similar to a mother figure in my life. I was 16 then, and that's when I made one of the biggest mistakes of my life. Curiosity had gotten the best of me. After two years of not being allowed outside after sunset, that combined with me being young and dumb led me to break the rule and stay out. I had lied to my uncle saying that I was staying at a friend's house and that I was going to stay the night. I even faked text messages with my friend just to convince my uncle. I left and waited until the sun went down. I then went out onto the streets. All the businesses were closed and honestly, I was really tempted to rob the stores as there were no cameras around. But I came to my senses and I chose not to. The only place open from what I could see was the hospital. I then got out my ocarina and started to play an original song I made just for practice on it. 
So far, it was pretty boring. No cars were out, no people, nothing. I sat down on a park bench and began browsing through Instagram and messaging my online friends. I looked at the time. It was 9 p.m. In my exploration, I didn't realize that five hours had already passed. It was dark now and I honestly felt like sneaking back home through the window. But I knew that I would get my butt chewed out by my uncle and his girlfriend. So, I decided to try and sleep in the park for the night. I turned my phone off, tucked it underneath the bench, and then tried to go to sleep. That's when I heard a groaning noise. I startled awake, only to see that nothing was there. I stood up and grabbed my phone. I messaged one of my good school friends, Anthony, who has lived here since he was born, and said, Hey, I think I just heard something groaning outside. Everyone's supposed to be inside, right? A few seconds later, he replied, Ethan, you're not supposed to be outside right now. I was startled, as he wasn't supposed to know that I was outside. He then followed that up with, Promise me, promise me that if you see one of them, never look into their eyes. I was confused, but I shrugged it off, as him just trying to scare me, for breaking the rules of the town. He was always like that. I began to walk around some more. And that's when I saw a faint pink glow from an alleyway. I approached it thoughtlessly and saw what I can only describe as something that didn't belong in this world. It wasn't the first time that I had seen something spooky. As I have seen stuff like white silhouettes before, which turned out to be just moonlight reflecting a certain way. This was the closest that I had ever gotten to something like that. In fact, if I hadn't skidded to a sudden halt, I would have knocked myself straight into it. I jumped behind a trash can nearby and watched the creature closely. It was at least eight feet tall and it had two large, glowing eyes which were the light pink in color. It was so skinny, it didn't even seem to have any organs, just bones. The creature was a humanoid, with two long arms, with three joints each which moved like shoulders. Its hands were long, with all of its fingers being around 10 inches long, and at the same length. Its skin was a bluish gray color and it lacked fingernails. Its feet were also thin and long and they lacked toes. At first, I thought that it didn't even have a mouth until I realized that its mouth was on its throat right where a man's Adam's apple would have been. It didn't seem to notice me, and for some reason, I got an almost irresistible urge to look into its eyes. I couldn't help it. I had to get just one look into its eyes. I also couldn't help but admire the surreal beauty of the thing standing before me. That's when it cracked its head to look straight at me. It stood up, opened its mouth and let out the most shrill and high-pitched screech I've ever heard. I turned and bolted out of there, but I heard the creature follow. My mind was racing with thoughts of what it would do if it ever caught up to me. I was terrified and didn't stop running. My lungs burned and my legs ached, as though the ground was crushing them into pieces. But I didn't stop. 
all I could focus on was getting away from the abomination chasing me. I kept glancing behind me, only to see it getting closer. I also saw other ones slowly appearing in the distance, seemingly searching for other humans outside. I then saw the one building open, the hospital. In desperation, I opened the door, practically leapt inside, and I slammed it shut again. The lady at the front desk saw my distressed face as I tried to catch my breath. Oh God, please tell me there's not one of them out there. We can't let any of them get inside. And then I heard that same groaning noise. I froze, panicked. The lady did too. I turned and saw the creature outside, almost pressed against the door's glass. The only thing between me and the thing now was just a two-inch thick barrier, the door. I knew that the door was nothing to this beast, as it was almost two full feet taller than it. I stood up and then began to run towards the desk, and then the creature squatted down and then, with full force, elbowed the door. The doors came crashing down as it got inside, I thought that this was it. I was going to die. My entire life flashed before my eyes as it stood right over me. And then my phone's ringtone went off. It was the same song I'd played on my ocarina earlier. I looked at my phone. My uncle was calling. The creature then recoiled and screamed, seemingly in either fear or shock. Possibly both. I then knew what to do. I turned on my flashlight app and set it to constantly flash. I even took out my ocarina and blew into it, without any holes covered as hard as I possibly could. The thing it then got on all fours and it dashed back outside as I heard its screams become fainter and fainter. The lady seemed horrified and rushed inside of the actual hospital, and I assume she liked the doors in the entry. Soon, the sun began to come up, and I ran as hard as I could back home, my mind racing. As soon as I got in, I saw that my uncle's girlfriend didn't seem too happy. I called your friend's mom and she said you weren't there at all. Where the heck were you? She said. My uncle looked at her and said, Relax, babe. He's probably had a rough night. I just looked down and told them, Oh, you have no idea. What happened to you? My uncle said. I went outside and I... I saw one of them, its face, its mouth, God, its eyes. I had to be calmed down for what felt like hours before I could even manage to tell them what happened. When I finally told them everything, I half expected them to call me a liar, but instead, my uncle looked completely shocked while his girlfriend looked white as a sheet of paper. Ethan, I told you not to stay outside. You didn't listen. My uncle said he had a tone that was stern and anxious at the same time. Ethan, we didn't want you to know why, but now I guess you do. Nobody knows what they are or where they come from, but what we do know is that they are never to be looked in the eyes. My uncle's girlfriend told me, Well, I drove it off, didn't I? Yes, but never do it again. You understand me? Yes, I won't do it again. I promise. I promise. I shouted. 
I had to go to therapy as I suffer from it after almost losing my life. I'm 19 now, and currently saving up to get as far away from here as possible. I still have no idea what those things were, but now I know that it was a good idea to stay inside after sundown. If only I knew why they wanted me inside.